Hey there, you're tuned in to MEA Worldwide. I'm your host, Elena Jordan, and today I'm sitting down with Chris Agos, who plays Buzz Aldrin in the upcoming series for All Mankind on Apple TV+. Right. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks today. For me. I'm so honored to be here. Now, this is an amazing role, Buzz Aldrin. When you found out that you were going to be playing this American icon, but in a universe where history has been kind of altered, what was your initial reaction? I think I was most excited that I was going to be able to put on the suit, like the space Ooh. suit, and actually go and play uh, with all of the, the stuff inside the spaceship. So um, that was my initial reaction. And then I realized, uh, wow, this is not going to be easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, finding out that uh, I was going to be playing Buzz was a, kind of a, a combination of like huge excitement, and I was it was an honor to do it. But then, you know, actually having to get into the work of, of doing all the research and everything to make sure that we kind of get it right, um, it was a lot. It, it was a lot. But it was, it was uh, an amazing honor to be able to do it. Were you able to ever speak with him in advance or anybody who has worked with him at NASA too? I mean, I know he's 89 years old at this point, but... He is, but he's very active. I mean, he, this guy is all over the place. He does more in a day than I do in a month. So um, we, uh, he was not involved in the development of the show. So I didn't have any access to him uh, in prep, but uh, I read everything that he wrote. I watched all the film of him in that Apollo era as I could find. YouTube is great for that. And um, uh, wound up reading his dissertation that he oh, wrote wow. uh, to get his doctorate at MIT. Yeah, I didn't understand a word of it, but I, I figured that, you know, that was kind of the thing that put him on the map. So I, I needed to have a little background. Um, but really the icing on the cake came when we were on set and our, our technical advisors, Mike and Denise Akuda, they really filled in all my gaps in understanding. So especially when it came to the actual Apollo 11 mission and what the astronauts would be doing inside of the, the spacecraft and everything, those guys saved my bacon on all that stuff. So uh, it was good. It was a lot of prep, but it all, I, I think, um, really, really helped out a lot. Now, you mentioned the, the dissertation to get his doctorate. One of kind of the big things about Buzz Aldrin is he's one of the only uh, or one of the first to get their doctorate and even got the, the nickname Dr. Rendezvous based exactly. on the title of You've done your research, the dissertation. You know. Yeah. Right. Did you get any fun nicknames on set? <laughs> no, but I mean, people called me Buzz all the time. And I think it was just because it was easier to remember that than my real name. So it, it was, it's pretty funny. I was there always like, Buzz, over there. Buzz, do this. Buzz, do that. Um, so I, that was fine. I, I was totally cool with being known as Buzz for, uh, for a few months. But... Um, yeah, you're right. He was. He did so much and contributed so much to the nation's space pro space program even before he set foot at NASA and uh, it, on the the Apollo 11 program. So I mean, he really really made an amazing contribution. And you also mentioned that you read his books and a lot of them, especially Return to Earth back in the 70s, dealt with things that most of the general public didn't really realize is that a lot of these astronauts deal with depression and alcoholism and everything post NASA. Right. Is this something that you, we may potentially dive into in the show as well? Well, you know, the show is not a biopic about Buzz. Right. Um, so we see Buzz as he was completely focused on the Apollo 11 mission. Um, and then Later on, Buzz does reemerge, and he has a little bit of a different role. I can't really talk about that, but um, uh, you'll see. And uh, it, it is interesting how Buzz was really open um, after his NASA career about mm -hmm. the difficulties he had. Um, you're right, it was all over his books. He, was, he made no secret of the fact that um, he struggled with, with alcohol and depression. And I think that is... Uh, kind of what makes him so great, or at least part of what makes him so great, is that you know he didn't try to put on a happy face. He was never much for appearances. He always, I, th I think, you get exactly what what is on Buzz's mind, and um, that that was a quality that I tried to bring, uh, and that we kind of played around with a little bit in, in later episodes of the show. I love the idea that this show has such grounded realism in this fictional world that is still based on all of the same physics and the you know the intricacies of our world but it's just if time had gone differently right. uh, if you could see an adaptation of a historical event but have it changed and altered separate from this show what historical event would you like to see kind of revisited 
Man, I'm going to give you that one. Nobody's asked me that one. That is a great <laughs> question. You know, I would love to see where we might be if Kennedy wasn't assassinated, mm. if uh, Abe Lincoln had made it through his presidency. Um, I would love to see some amazingly talented storyteller come up with options with those two events. I could definitely see you in those uh, those stories as put well. On a hat, right? I could put on the hat <laughs> and the vest and make the speeches, right, for Lincoln. Sure I mean, you've that. played authoritative characters pretty much your entire career, yeah. which unsurprisingly, you have this amazing commanding voice <laughs> too. So I am blessed with good genetics vocally. Yeah, I have this thing that people comment on all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I do the authority thing um, pretty often. So. so from from House of Cards to uh, Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, do you have a favorite other than, obviously, For All Mankind, which will be all of our favorites? Of course, but... it's going to be all of our favorites. <laughs> um, I don't know. I seem to have a thing for suits. Like, uh, you know, I usually do a suit and tie, and now I'm doing a space suit. I don't know what's next, maybe a wetsuit or a <laughs> hazmat suit or something. But um, do I have a favorite? I, uh, I, I don't know, you know. It was, I will tell you this, doing House of Cards was kind of a bucket list thing for me. Mm. Um, I was a like, super fan of the show, and it was one of the only times where, you know, I, whenever I get a job, and, you know, you're walking onto these very elaborate sets, and there's famous people around, and you kind of have to act like you've been there before, you know, otherwise you just look like maybe you don't belong. And that was the first time that I walked in to a set and walked into the Oval Office and was kind of overwhelmed. It was sort of wowed by that experience, you know. Um, so it would have been great to, to have a little bit more time with Agent Bowman. Um, uh, I think initially the role was sort of pitched as something that could could have grown a little bit, mm -hmm. but then, of course, we all know what happened with the, um, the, the off-screen stuff that, that went on mm -hmm. before that season. And they had a lot to unpack, so I totally get why they kind of dropped, uh, you know, my guy and, and focused on other things. Um, as a fan, I was a little disappointed. So well, I'm, not, I'm probably not as much as you were, but you know. Yeah, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I was so excited just to be there. Um, and then to have, you know, um, maybe a little bit of ambition to know that, oh, you know, this we're going to be seeing this guy a little more. Um, that was a bummer. But obviously, you know, the show's got to do what it's got to do. And mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with me. So that was fine. And you mentioned that that was one of your bucket list shows. What are some other bucket list shows that you really, really want to have a role on? Well, I'll tell you one big one that got away from me was ER. Um, well, oh, really? I remember the premiere of ER. I was in college in the 90s, and, and it was ER on NBC and Chicago Hope were premiering at the same night, at the same time, time slot. I think that was CBS. And I was like... You know, back then, you didn't have DVR or anything. You had to pick, so I chose ER. And from the pilot, that show completely grabbed me, and I was like, I have to work on that show. And I was in Chicago at the time, so it was based there. It would come and shoot exteriors there. So I'm like, I don't care what I have to do. I have to go do that show. And it lasted forever, and I just it just never worked out. So for me, ER was the thing that was like, yeah. ah, Clooney! Oh, that one. <laughs> but I mean, right now... Gosh, there's so much going on. Um, I would love to work on Glow. I would love to work on Mindhunter. Yeah. I would love oh. to work on um, um, uh, uh, This Is Us is great. Ooh. I mean, there's a bunch of shows that are just so well-written and so smart and, and the storytelling is so good. It's like, I, I don't know. I can't pick one, you know? I love that you mentioned too Chicago Hope because then you went on to Chicago Fire and Chicago right. PD. So it's like, and you're originally you lived in Chicago for I was a while born too. There so and worked there for twenty years. Just can't get away from Chicago. LA. Yeah, no, Chicago will always be home. We'll it, always does be that home. make Chicago Fire and Chicago PD have a little bit of an extra special place in your heart just because of the location? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, not only because of the location, but on Chicago PD, it's it's really where I learned so much. Um, I spent almost uh, a little, actually 20 episodes. I got cut out of two of them, but so over 20 episodes um, on that show. And, you know, you learn how to, how loudly to speak, how, where to stand, how, you know, what your priorities are on set, the more you, you do it. And, you know, everyone there was so kind and, and patient. And, uh, you know, Jason Begay, who heads the show uh, as part of the cast, was, you know, instrumental in, in keeping me, me there for a long time. So, you know, I've got nothing but great things and, and great memories of Chicago PD. 
I love that. And you've worked with phenomenal people now, Ronald D. Moore, too, right, who exactly. is iconic in the sci-fi world. He's amazing. He, you know, he, he kind of comes with his own built-in fan base, and deservedly so. You know, there are, there are people who are like, oh, it's a Ron Moore show? I'm totally in. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it's exciting to think about what this, the marriage of great storytellers and great companies like Apple uh, is going to do for entertainment going forward. You know, and Ron's, a, Ron's an amazing writer and, and he does great stuff with this show. Were you a fan of Battlestar Galactica or Star Trek or anything before going into it? So it's so funny because I remember the original Battlestar oh! Galactica. Like, I'm that oh, gee, the like, SG. Going way back to the <laughs> 80s, you know. Um, and just remembering all those characters. So yeah, it was it was really cool to be like, and at first I was like, Ron Moore, he did, he did Battlestar Galactica. That was way, way a long time ago. You're not talking about that one, right? No, 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 the reimagined one, you know? So that was really, uh, that was really cool. But yeah, yeah, um, Outlander's great. Uh, I can't say enough about Ron and his team. And working with Apple TV, I mean, I have to say, after seeing this trailer, I already was ready. I was like, okay, Apple, take my money. I got to watch this show. Right. I got to watch this. Is this going to be released, do you know, episodically? Or is it going to be released kind of all at once, binge style? Right. My understanding is that there are uh, going to be three, the first three episodes will be released all at once. And then they're going to dole them out weekly after that. It's a 10 episode season. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a combination. It's, they're not going to drop everything all at once. That's genius because yeah. it's about three episodes that you get super duper hooked and you're like, give me more, give yeah. me more of this. Exactly. And I, uh, if, you, if, if you're purchasing an Apple device now, you buy one of the new iPhone 11s or anything, then you get uh, a year's worth of the service for free. You don't, don't even have to do anything. It just comes. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. And when can we see the premiere of the show? The show premieres on November 1st. And from what I understand, that's this Friday uh, noon is when everything goes live. Oh, it's nice. like up noon oh, wow. um, Eastern time. So. Oh. Early and often. So set your devices now. Set your alarms. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and what do you hope that everybody takes away from the show For All Mankind? If you had one message to say to everyone to... Yeah. Um, you know, the show is, is great because it's an alt history piece, but it's not uh, uh, spawned by a tragedy, right? A lot of alt history kind of goes mm -hmm. down that mm -hmm. negative, uh, negative road. And... Uh, for All Mankind doesn't do that. We stay really positive. It's sort of aspirational, and it's a look at what might have happened um, if all of that national unity sort of stayed uh, with the space program for uh, a long period of time. Um, I don't think we have a lot of national unity right now, so it's, it's great to go back and relive what that was like during the Apollo era, um, and also fascinating to really kind of you know, delve into what it might be if we still had a, a good percentage of that around. So that's what I'm looking forward to people get coming away from. Well, I cannot wait to see this series. It looks absolutely fantastic. I've only seen the pilot, so really? I can't wait. Yeah, I've seen like snippets here and there, but I haven't seen the rest of the show. So I'm, I'm waiting to watch with everybody else. Oh, well, awesome. Well, where can everybody keep up with you too in the meantime? Oh yeah, in the meantime, thanks. Uh, if you want to catch me on Instagram, I'm at, at Chris Agos. I'm also on Twitter, so you can pop by and say hello there. <laughs> and you can find more of our interviews at MEA Worldwide. That's MEAWW.com. I'll see you guys next time. See you soon. Have a good one. <laughs>